What is going on, guys? James Black Panda, PandaCast episode five. Here with Jarrell McGammon's not here today. We're going to be talking about favorite games from our different from different studios and going into a little detail on them and why they're our favorite games. So, if any of these games show up on your favorite games from that studio, please let us know in the comments below. If they don't show up, tell us why we're wrong in the comments below. Uh, hope you enjoy the show. Jarrell, What's what up? up, dude? How's it going? It's going good, dude. It's going real good. So, how do you want to break this down? Do you want to go from studio to studio or just kind of like list off a couple of your favorite games real quick? We go to studio. Like right now, I guess, you know, I'll start off with my favorite studio and then, you know, we can work our way down and stuff like that. Sounds good. Not saying any other studios, but me for whatever I'm saying, because trust me, I have a love hate relationship with this first studio. So, oh, I already know. If you're saying <laughs> love hate relationship, I already know. <laughs> Y'all know me, if y'all watch my channel or whatever. Uh, my first favorite love-hate studio, the number one, because I play the most games from this studio, is EA. And EA oh, yeah. <laughs> is basically a part of my entire life. When it comes from Need for Speed, Madden, Star Wars, Battlefront, NFL Street, NBA Street, um, mm -hmm. EA has been around for a, a long time. I remember they had EA Games. EA Big, yeah. EA Sports. I pretty much play EA Sports. <laughs> it's in the it's game. The game. EA Tribu Tribulation. I forgot what they call it. It's something was nuts. I think that was the fishing. Tribulation. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I've been playing with them, uh, playing their games for a long time. So, when it comes for Need for Speed, I think that was one of my first games before Madden. That was like Need for Speed Underground, like the Little John song. Yeah. To the ones to the wall. Uh, yeah. that was like when Fast and the Furious really came out and everybody was like oh shoot I can customize cars and you know just go crazy mm -hmm. um, so and that was a lot of fun even though I never beat that first one but everybody was still <laughs> oh yeah I mean yeah. I don't have I, I thought I didn't have the deepest connection to EA because you mentioned EA all I think about is really EA sports but yeah. when it comes to Need for Speed Underground um, and Need for Speed as a franchise. Uh, I'm just looking at their website right now for featured games. So I honestly didn't know Need for Speed was with EA. But again, it's wow. still not a franchise that I played all that much. Like, I almost never played Need for Speed. I was more of a Burnout person. Like, I like Burnout Paradise, but that's kind of it. And the biggest thing that's out right now is Dead Space. So Dead Space is by yeah. EA. The Dead Space remake just came out uh, at the end of January. And um, some other fan favorites of the uh, studio would be like Apex Legends, Madden, and FIFA, and NBA 2K. So yeah, well, not EA, not, not 2K, not from EA. Oh, oh, that's not EA. Okay, well that's, NBA. That's take two. Oh, <laughs> that's take two. They get uh, they do. Don't they do a basketball game that's like shitty? NBA Live. Actually, I like NBA Live, oh. but a lot of people don't. You know, I think they canceled <laughs> it because of 2K, which is crazy. <laughs> 2K is just too good. That's really what it is. 2K Sports. But yeah. Um, so yeah, when it comes to EA as the studio, um, what is your favorite game? Or did you mention that? Well, no, I just went through like a certain list of the ones. But I think my favorite game, because the longevity is obviously Madden, uh, yeah, uh, like he was saying, Need for Speed kind of fell off over the years. I think most wanted was the best, but as far as my favorite is Madden. Since I had it from two thousand one, all the way now to two thousand twenty three, so I've literally played every Madden since then. Um, yeah. That's where the love hate comes in because I enjoy it, but I know they can do better. And certain companies just gotta be like, you know what, people don't like it. We gotta do something about it instead of just putting it out there because they know they're gonna buy it. Uh, well, we're gonna buy yeah. it, so yeah. So, what do you think your favorite game from EA Sport? Well, not EA Sport, but EA in general. Is um, it Dead Space? Yes, it, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely Dead Space. But the original Dead Space was not an EA game, I don't think. Um, I think it was under Visceral, and then later on, Visceral got bought by EA for Dead Space 2 and 3. I think um, Visceral. Nice. A visceral. That's a games. cool name. Yeah. Visceral Game Developer. Um, Dead Space came out in 2008 and then bought by EA Games 
Uh, Visceral Games. Let's look up their history real quick. But yeah, Dead Space is a franchise. I mean, obviously they're coming back out with the Dead Space remake. So I was talking with a buddy of mine, and basically he said that it's better than the original. Like it's the definitive way to play the game. So if you have not played Dead Space and you're interested in a survival horror game, uh, don't worry about going back and playing the original because <laughs> this one is clearly better, right? Uh, Visceral Games, EA Redwood Shores... Uh, oh, so it's been EA the whole time. So um, they just called it was like Visceral was a, I guess, a subsidiary. Yeah, like a, of, a studio from under EA. Yeah, from under EA Redwood Shores. So EA, so Dead Space has been an EA game the entire time. I didn't know that. So it got, oh, yeah. Oh, dissolved and merged into EA Vancouver and EA Montreal. And visceral games was defunct in 2017 so sorry visceral games if you want to play a game that is from the studio of visceral games or like from the developers or creators play callisto protocol that just came out in december i think but from the same source that says dead space remake is amazing and it's the definitive way to play also said that calypso protocol sucks so i'll take his <laughs> word for it because He's turned me on to a lot of get different games, and I personally like Dead Space. And he pretty much said, "Hey, yeah. Calypso or Callisto Protocol is not a Dead Space sub uh, like substitute. Like, just go straight yeah. to the real thing. Just go straight to the real thing." Um, but yeah, yeah I'm picking up when it comes. What off you said, I, I see a lot yeah. of people that never played Dead Space that's playing it on PS5 or PC, and they was like, "Yo, this game is." Great. A lot of people that play uh, Resident Evil say Dead Space is better, way better than that. So that's pretty yeah. cool. It is. See. It is. Like, in my opinion, there's a lot of, like, goofy tropes in Resident Evil. And they kind of keep it uh, in there on purpose because it's the campiness of it. But yeah. for Dead Space, it's, it's scary, man. Like, I was playing... I remember playing Dead Space 1, and this we've talked about this like last couple of episodes, but playing through Dead Space 1, talking on the phone with you guys because PS3 didn't have the <laughs> voice chat. Yeah. And it was even scarier playing through Dead Space 2 because me and McGavin got Dead Space 2 at the same time. We were planning on playing through it together, like we did the first one. And either he went on a trip or I went on a trip, came back, and he beat the game. Like, he, he played it through without me, and I was like, motherfucker, so now I got to play it by myself. And, yeah. there, like, that was back when every now and then I'd put subtitles on, and there's a part where you're walking up, like, this little ramp in Dead Space 2 towards the tram, or towards the train, yeah. and with the subtitles off, all you hear is, <laughs> like, weird noises. So you're just thinking, like, oh, there must be a zombie or monster or something like that. And then, like, Spoiler alert. Uh, the ghost of your girlfriend, Nicole, walks up towards you and starts talking to you. But with the subtitles on, and uh, she starts talking to you, and all she's like yeah. making weird noise. And it's meant to just be creepy, right? But with the subtitles on, it's like saying words. So it's just like, Isaac, yeah. you failed me, and shit like that. And I'm like, oh, shit, that's what the... Oh, that's yeah. fucking her talking, and she's saying that. So... It was definitely a cool, like, like definitely a scary game. And yeah. it really made you like, oh, shit. Whereas Resident Evil, you're doing, like, backflips and, like, somersault kicks and shit like that. It's like, in Resident Evil 4. Yeah. And they kept that in the Resident Evil 4 remake. That's supposed to come out this month. So if you didn't know that, Resident Evil 4 coming out. Or Resident Evil 4 remake coming out in February. Um, oh. But, yeah. Nah, Dead Space... Great game from EA. All right, so yeah, that's cool. And plus, like I said, it may be a better experience now because obviously there's a lot better headphones than there was back then. So that's around sound 3D oh, audio. Yeah. And, you know, that, that would be freaking nuts to play now. So I may actually think about it. That never has been my genre, but since you guys say so much good stuff about it and seeing everybody else say good stuff, I may just have to do it. <laughs> Dude, like, all right. So the thing about scary games is... I'd rather play a scary game than watch a scary movie. 
Because what's the most annoying thing about scary movies? Someone, like the killer's in this room, and they go in with like a banana peel, thinking they're going to do something. And then they go and like they run upstairs, like they make all the wrong decisions. And you're like, that is so stupid. Why would I do that? You know, like Scream and Jason and Friday the 13th and uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and Halloween. It's like they all make dumb decisions. But when you're controlling the character, that's you. So you're like, oh, fuck, I ain't going in there. Or I'm going to go in there real slow, wait for him to creep up, and then bam, 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 you know? It's like you yeah. can plan it out. You feel a little more in control, even though it's claustrophobic, you know? That's what I like about scary games. Because it's not just you're watching the experience of someone make stupid decisions. Yeah. You get to make the stupid decisions and feel dumb afterwards. But I think it would be great. And again, that's another one where I'm like, dude, if you play that shit, you got to stream it. Yeah. Like that and The Last of Us. The Last of Us isn't scary. The Last of Us has, it's just like really good story. And there's a couple of parts where you're like, ah, oh, fuck, this is kind of creepy. But yeah. the Dead Space is a true survival horror game. And I want to see you play it. Like commentary, face cam, stream the shit. <laughs> I will see about that. Uh, as far as the face cam, I got to do something about that. But, um, uh, what was that game? Uh, I know we still on this Dead Space thing, but what was that game since you talked about choices? Uh, you played it. It was a game where whatever you choose changes the story. Oh, uh, Until Dawn. Yes, there we go, there we go. Yeah. That one is good, too. Like, if you're looking... That one's more of like a story. where That's kind of mm-hmm. like the scary movie where you're just like watching them do dumb shit, but you're also making the choices, too, so it's you making you doing dumb shit. And it really fucking tears your heart out because <laughs> you'll you'll make a choice thinking like, oh, this is the better option. And then the guy kills you and you're like, yeah. fuck, that wasn't a good option, right? I was getting super lucky because every choice that I was making, all my characters were living. They were all surviving. And then uh, I started playing one time. It was like the fifth time that I played it and... Not like played through it, but it was like session yeah. of playing through the game. And dude, I killed like three characters with my choices like within twenty minutes. I was like, <laughs> fuck. But until dawn. Uh yeah, what, I what studio? I can't remember that studio. Um until dawn developer. I think it's uh it, before I look it up, I think it's um uh, no, it's not plated. Never mind, I can't think of it. It's It'd be funny if it's like yeah. super. <laughs> what is that? Yes, it's super massive games. Yeah, super massive. Super massive games. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, shout out to them. They made a great job at making you feel like, oh shoot, did I make You're... the right decision or wrong yeah. decision? Especially remember uh, that squirrel that you they they show up like you like oh shoot should I shoot it should I not shoot it? Yeah. <laughs> did you play it or did were I you played, just going from uh, my video? I think I played a little bit. Me and my girl tried to play it for a little bit, and I think we stopped playing it. But that was a funny was scary, part. Or y'all just fell off? No, because she likes scary movies, and I tried to get her to play it, but I was like teaching her how to play. So oh. we just thought we just thought, yeah. Okay, it is definitely a good one to go through because the ending is really great, and it's true. Like you could make a decision that kills everybody in the game and nobody lives or you can make decisions the right way and save everybody in the game like it's truly like you could have an ending where one only one character dies yeah and it's pretty it's pretty crazy and i think there's a trophy for different combinations like one survives two survives three survives four survives but it doesn't it doesn't stack yeah so it's not like if you have the ending where all the characters survives, you get all the trophies. Like, no, you got to go back and play and make the decisions that get you only two characters to live at the end. Yeah. Which is kind of okay. crazy. Like, you're making decisions that are going to kill people on purpose because, <laughs> you know, it's like, damn, I can't have three people survive this time. Like, you can't have everybody sur- survive. Somebody has to die. Yeah. It's like, mm, yeah. sorry, sorry, uh, Mike. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Which I liked Mike. He was like the jock asshole guy. I liked Mike. He was cool. I wanted to be like Mike. <laughs> but, All right, man. So that was my favorite studio. What is your favorite studio? Um. Okay, so I mean, basically, we went over 
Dead Space, which is my favorite game from EA. And then subsequently we also went over Until Dawn, which is my favorite game from Supermassive. So that's boom, two out of the way. <laughs> um, uh, hand over, what is it? Hand over fist? Whatever. Without a doubt, my absolute most favorite developer, Naughty Dog. Everybody wow. uh, should have already <laughs> fucking known that. I basically love every Naughty Dog game, um, except for like their very first one, which I never played, which was before Crash Bandicoot. I couldn't tell you what it is, but I know they made something before then. Um, started, I think the first PS th- uh, PS1 game that I really played was Crash Bandicoot Warped. And that was the game that I pretty much went to the very end on and found out later that it was Naughty Dog. And the entire reason I wanted to get a PlayStation 3 was from the Uncharted commercial for Uncharted Drake's Fortune back in like 2006 or something like that. Yeah. And played Uncharted 1, Uncharted 2, Uncharted 3, Uncharted 4, Uncharted Lost Legacy, The Last of Us on PS3, The Last of Us on PS4, The Last of Us Part <laughs> 2 on PS4. I bought it on it's the PS4 version that I played on PS5. And I am interested in the show because everybody's saying it's good and there's like certain clips from the show that I've seen where I'm like damn that does kind of look good it does fucking yeah. does kind of look good I watched the documentary on the making of The Last of Us that Naughty Dog made themselves and put out and without a doubt my favorite game it's very hard to determine between Uncharted and The Last of Us but the one that I greatly enjoy the story and the gameplay and I always think about it and want to come back to it is Uncharted 2. Sorry, okay. Uncharted 2 takes the fucking cake because <laughs> that's the one where if we're talking about best multiplayers, which we'll go into in a future episode, but Uncharted 2, one of my favorite multiplayers of all time and we spent so many hours on that game playing through the story. I really... I was just, Okay, so... Yesterday I was watching Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark because yeah. it's been a while since I've seen it. Me and Bella were sitting on the couch watching it. And I was thinking about, okay, why is it that I liked Uncharted 2 better than Uncharted 3? Because I've heard people say if Uncharted 3 came out in 2009 and Uncharted 2 came out in 2011, everybody would think Uncharted 3 is their favorite. But everybody thinks Uncharted 2 is their favorite just because it came out before Uncharted 3. And I'm like, no, I don't agree with that. Because Uncharted 3 is cool, but there's certain things in that game that just kind of throw me off and just kind of like, eh, I didn't really enjoy it over the second one. But the number one thing that I enjoyed the most about the second one was just Lazarevich and the mercenaries. Because he's loading up this train, tanks, a full army, rolling into the Himalayan mountains to find Shangri-La. And it's just like bulldozing his way through these uh, sacred (laughs) artifacts. He's just the definition of a bad guy. Like the classic Indiana Jones going against Hitler and the Nazis bad guy. Yeah. And that's why I like Uncharted 2 better than Uncharted 3. Because Uncharted 3 was trying to, oh man, Drake's past is... The deception of Drake is coming back to yeah. haunt him with Marlo, and it, it's a little more niche and detailed. It's like Lazarvich is like puny Drake. I like he doesn't give a fuck about <laughs> Drake. It's not yeah. like they're mortal enemies. It's just oh, I'm doing this thing. You're in my way. Get the hell out the way. And Drake's got to go against this unstoppable force of Levar- Lazarvich's army. And it's yeah. like oh shit, can he? It's a it's the classic Indiana Jones story where it's like they got the resources, but he's got the knowledge. It's not like Marlowe where there's also like some little bit of mysticism and like mystical powers yeah. but that they don't really like they they hint at, but they don't capitalize on. Yeah. So as far as favorite game from the Uncharted franchise and Naughty Dog, Uncharted 2 is definitely my favorite game. I have a really soft spot for Uncharted 1 as well. Like that, like I've beaten that game like 10 times. That's like... <laughs> A really, yeah. really soft spot. But Uncharted 2 just took it to the next level. And I watched all the behind the scenes of the actors and all them talking about making of the game for Uncharted 2. 
And I know a lot of people are like, man, you just really talked up The Last of Us and then went hard on Uncharted 2. <laughs> you went hard on too. Absolutely second favorite game just because of the gameplay and the story and just literally everything about it um, is The Last of Us. Yes, 100%. Um, definitive way to play. I would say is the remastered version or the remake version, like with yeah. the best frame rate, best graphics, all that stuff. Really do yourself a solid. If you have not played it, at least give it a shot. You know, I will tell you the first hour or two, it's kind of a long tutorial, but there's a lot of story beats, but get through the first couple of hours to where you're just going into the encounters and you're kind of just watch playing the story and playing through the game. And I think you'll, you'll enjoy it. Um, my personal opinion, the gameplay is fun and the story is great. But Uncharted 2 is more of like the nostalgia as well from 2009. Coming home yeah. from school, just blazing through the story. But yeah, Uncharted oh, 2 from of, Naughty Dog. What did you like about, did you like the Last of Us multiplayer or no? Uh, Not necessarily. Like it was cool. The Last of Us, uh, I forgot what it was called. Factions, the Factions multiplayer in the last of us one they only had it on the ps3 version but if you played the remastered version on ps4 i think you could connect to the ps3 servers and play as well i think okay yeah i think i remember doing that but it was fine to me there's people that swear up and down by it uh but what i am excited for is Naughty Dog is making a full-fledged standalone factions multiplayer for The Last of Us Part 2. Oh, really? Yeah. So The Last of Us Factions is going to be a standalone multiplayer. And they're doing like full-on development as far as like a full-on story mode in the multiplayer universe. So I'm thinking they're going to do something somewhat the division style or somewhat GTA style where, okay, there's these missions that you go on and you're kind of building up your base. Maybe, maybe more so fallout four where you have like those little base camps yeah. that you can build up. Um, that's what I'm thinking it's going to be like that. It's so little information. There's so little information on it. Yeah. I'm not really sure what to really expect from it, but they're saying it's bigger and bigger than anything they've done but they say that every time and they kind of <laughs> are right every time that would be cool but if yeah. they uh took like their creations like uncharted last of us and combined them to like skins or dlc or something like that that'd be that'd be sick yeah that'd kinda be cool like what well, uh remember even uncharted 2 did that with Killzone and nathan hale so they can yeah. do that yeah so that would be cool if let, let's say you had you if it's asymmetric or there's an asymmetric mode where these people are playing as survivors. These people are playing as, uh, infected. If there was like a, a runner or like a, a whatever, uh, <laughs> that looks like Drake or looks like yeah. Sully. And he's all like, God damn it. <laughs> you know, has like a cigar. Yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be awesome. But I've noticed the trend with multiplayer games where it's like, they go from a serious feel to where it's like focusing more on Fortnite skins and oh I'm gonna run around yeah. with like a rainbow uh unicorn head with a speedo on and it's just like it just takes you out of it. You know? Yeah, I see what you mean. But to the developers, that's like more money for them and longevity in a way. They they kinda consider that as longevity. But as long as it's serious characters, like I'm not saying put Crash Bandicoot and like a multiplayer like walking around with an AK but Something like Drake or like Cicely or Nathan Hale or Camaro from like uh, the other game like they did Uncharted. I think that would be cool to yeah. like, kind of bring back a little bit. Yeah, that was cool because that wasn't in that was in Uncharted Two multiplayer. Like you could play as the Chimera or a Hellgast. Yeah, I think, I think it was. was. Yeah, yeah, that was very cool. That was very cool. So for me, Uncharted Two, very close second, uh, The Last of Us from Naughty Dog. All right, but from uh, Naughty Dog, I would have to go with the Uncharted as well because even though my history was Crash Bandicoot, that was the first like Naughty Dog game I've really ever played. 
Crash mm-hmm. Team Racing has to be up there um, as far as another one. And I will have to add that to like Activision as well because it was like Naughty Dog Activision. I don't know how that went or how long that was. I think Naughty Dog started off. But Crash Team Racing, as far as hours played, I probably played that the most even after Uncharted 2 because that game, me and my cousin, we played that almost every single night when I used to live with them. Um, yeah. And Crash... Uh, what was that dude's name? Dang, I forgot what his name is in the game. But that game, just racing. And now that they recreated it on the PS4, I yeah. believe. And I, we played it on PS5 together. You actually enjoyed it. You don't even really like racing games, but you enjoyed it as well. Uh, yeah. And it's like, I like the skill that you have to have behind it. Like, that one person we played with, oh, it was just God, like this yeah. and this. <laughs> oh, she was this and this around the track like three times. Uh, yeah, on that, we had like five laps. And we were on lap like number two. She already did five laps, and we're like, "Okay, that was fun, I guess." But yeah, so uh, but yes, number two had to be Crash Team Racing, but number one is definitely Uncharted Two. Pretty much like he said, the game it was just different. It had like cutscenes. It had a story. Like nowadays, games lack that story, like that feel. I love games that make you feel like, "Oh shoot, that game was awesome." And I believe that was one of the first games that really did that, especially being a PS3 game. It really, it really sold the PS3. That type of game right there. Was Literally, it did. Bought it. Yeah. Uh, Literally, I'm glad I waited, did. and I got the Game of the Year edition. It got Game of the Year, so you know it was good. Uh, because I remember you and McGavin was telling me about it. I was like, "Yo, I gotta get it," and I'm glad I waited because I got all the DLC for free, pretty much. And yeah. that was like the second game I really played online. Period. Uh, and I'm glad it was with y'all because y'all told me about it. And I was like, okay, cool. I played more multiplayer with y'all than I did the story. Like I, I did the story like a year Same. later or something like that. Um, Same. But going through the story, it was like, wow, this is sick. Uh, what was it? Tenzin was in that game. And just yeah. <laughs> the quotes that we still talk about to this day, Uncharted 2 was, was that game. And they have the remastered version, not the on PS5, but the PS4 collection or whatever. By the way, PS4, mm-hmm. PlayStation Collection is going down May 9th, so if y'all don't have those games, please add it to y'all library, and they say you can still keep it. And I believe What do you mean, PlayStation Uncharted, Collection? Remember, the, if you have a PS5, guys, the PlayStation Collection oh. is like a, a a collection full of games that's like from the PS4 or PS3, depends on if they was remastered or not, and it goes away May 9th, but they said if you add them to your library, you can keep them. And Uncharted 1, 2, and 3 is on that list. Because it's the collection, so there you go, remaster. Uh, so if y'all haven't played it, I'm, I'm, the multiplayer does not work if y'all have PS Now or whatever. So Killzone 3, uh, Uncharted 2, Resistance 3, with all those multiplayer games do not work no more because the servers are down. But at least you can enjoy the single player mode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then May, you said May 9th for the PlayStation collection. Yes, so add those yeah. to the library, and they'll still work. Okay, cool, because I, I didn't even know that. So, um, yeah, and everybody who's screaming at the top of their lungs listening to this, um, yes, we understand and know that Jack and Dexter was made by Naughty Dog. Jack and Dexter, the precursor legacy, Jack 2, Jack 3, Jack X, Combat Racing. Yes, we know. And, and I played, <laughs> I played, yeah. it. I played and the first amazing. one in Platinum. <laughs> yes, that was great. I don't like the first one at all. But I got Jack Two and Jack uh, Jack Two and the Jack One at the same time, and then Jack Three came out later, and I fucking loved it. And Jack X Combat Racing came out, and I fucking loved it. So yes, Jack and Dexter holds a special place in my heart as well. Okay. Yeah, that's one of the games, guys. Uh, so for us, it's like well, he played last. I haven't played. I'm glad I waited for all of these games. Like Jack and Dexter, I played on the PS3. Uh, my charter obviously came on the PS3, and. <clears throat> If y'all haven't played Crash Team Racing, they had it on the PS4, like I said. So go play those. I'm glad I waited for a lot of this stuff so I can actually enjoy it in a different way that maybe somebody didn't do it back then uh, with higher graphics or maybe better controls or whatever. But it's always great to have that nostalgia feel. Yeah. Definitely, okay, definitely. Cool. Yeah, so Naughty Dog. So Next yeah. studio. EA, Naughty Dog. Mm. Technically let's super massive. With, yeah, yeah, super massive. Um, let's go with Take Two, aka Rockstar, or Take Two owns Rockstar. 
So, uh, it, so isn't Tech Two a publisher and Rockstar is a developer? It's kind of weird. They like EA. I mean, Take Two is like EA pretty much. Uh, so I guess you can say what is they made that right? game. What, what what was that couples game that you can go around and like the little? I think it's called Take Two, which is funny. <laughs> it's called Takes Two. It, it yeah, takes it two. takes two. Yeah. yeah. So I'll go ahead and start off. You know, while you're doing that, but for me, Take Two. What the uh, fuck is going on with my computer? Okay. I'm looking it up. If it it'll fucking work, it's not fucking working. <laughs> this is that rage we used to on the online games, guys. <laughs> no, I like I'm I'm typing. I, I type in the word take and it goes <laughs> with a bunch of T's. And I'm like <laughs> your T is messed up with your computer. But as far as me, uh it would have to be on a rock star, which is Ooh, well, I forgot about it. Ooh. It's between Red Dead Redemption and GTA. Obviously GTA second most bought game behind <clears> what was it? Minecraft or Wii Sports or something like that. I forgot which what it was. But Minecraft is number one, then GTA oof. five is number two. But I would have to say I feel like Red Dead Two has more memories, but GTA five has like the longevity to it. Considering I played it on PS three, PS four, and now PS five. And I'm glad did I only buy it once? I think I only bought it once. Did I buy it twice? I'm not sure how many times I bought it, but GTA 5, I never played the story mode, but all the multiplayer mode alone, it was just amazing. The fact that it was just um, like that next-gen feel, the the whole world, you can pretty much do whatever. And a lot of people love those games because it's like you do stuff that you wish you can do. Not necessarily like go around and kill people. I'm not talking about that, but just the yeah, freeness of <laughs> getting jets and riding around cars. And it, it's, it's, it's amazing to me. I love it. Why you looking like this? Yeah. I love the game for that reason. <laughs> yeah. And I look creepy. It's just cool. And plus, for people that live in California, that must be nice. That would be cool if they made a game for Atlanta. And you could be like, oh, I went there. But people in Cali, like, they can go to the beach and the pier. And oh, all yeah. That. Um, That's a good good thought. So, since Atlanta is on the map now, guys, like, that would be cool. Whatever studio, please make a game in Atlanta. You know, we're going to see in Miami. Uh, New York when it comes to another game, uh, Hong Kong, all kind of stuff, but never Atlanta in any game. Maybe, I, I don't know if Need for Speed was Atlanta the first one. I'm not sure, but I don't remember nothing from that being in Atlanta from back then. Nah. So, yeah. And then, um, like, as far as speaking of things like that, like Ubisoft made Watch Dogs 2 in San Francisco. So the people that live in california you're getting the representation <laughs> as far as san francisco los santos is like a la like coastal city you know like yeah, it's always of... california new york and miami that's it <laughs> yeah spider-man yeah, all the true. way all those spider-man games new york um like i told you true calm games new york well one was new york one was la and the other one's hong kong <laughs> yeah so true and um, so yeah, as far as Rockstar, uh, my absolute favorite game from Rockstar, just all around, it's kind of a toss up between Red Dead Redemption One and Red Dead Redemption Two, because Red Dead Redemption Two's story is so fucking good. Like, even all of the times that we played multiplayer on Red Dead Redemption wow. One, I'm like. I'm like, damn. That's why it's a toss up because I'm like, the Red Dead Redemption One multiplayer is so fucking good because we yeah. played it so much. Which I do think that the Red Dead Redemption Two multiplayer could be good if we all actually played it. Um, but going strictly off of the story of the second one and the multiplayer of the first one, it's like a head to head. Yeah. Because I had so much fun with you guys, but then the story mode of the second one is so good. So I'm like, if you guys, <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> I'm like it's so it's so close. It's like the it's for the same reason. Like Uncharted 2's multiplayer and story was great, and that's why it's like hard to decide between The Last of Us and Uncharted 2. But yeah. Uncharted 2 wins out because the single player and the story uh, and the multiplayer were good. Whereas this, it's like I didn't really care for the story of the first one. I beat it, but it was like it was all about multiplayer. Yeah. So. 
I think just from the pure experience of playing with you guys and the fact that we still talk about so many of those times and staying up super late listening to dumb videos like, man, you just mad because I came in the room and seen me fucking your dad, right? Like <laughs> that stupid video. Like we're we're like dying laughing on the mics, like yeah. running around like expertly sniping people and throwing knives at each other's heads. Like clearly I think the I would say the multiplayer of the first one and Red Dead Redemption one wins yeah. strictly off of my experience with you guys in the multiplayer. If I was going beat for beat story, fuck on uh, Red Dead Redemption one. <laughs> <laughs> Red oh. Dead Redemption 2 dominates Red Dead Redemption 1 when it comes to the story yeah. mode. But yeah. because of the multiplayer experience with you guys, um, 100%, it takes the lead for me from Rockstar. And I'm not that big on GTA. Like, There's not a single GTA game where I'm like, that was great. Man, G GTA is it's nice, man. But like I told him, more memories on Red Dead Redemption 1. So Yeah. I hate I that. I will tell you this. I don't think they have the multi do they have the multiplayer no more anymore? Or no. For Red Dead Redemption One? No, I think yeah. it suffers from the same thing. It's like the old game, so it's like it doesn't the servers aren't up, I don't think. Oh yeah, they reset my character when I went up the last time I played PlayStation and now they reset my character and I was like, I don't even want to play no more. Yeah. And um with GTA, I will say that my favorite GTA game is GTA four. That one I liked a lot, and um, then the set like my second favorite would be Vice City. Okay. So yeah. like story, like because the story, like you liked it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, GTA Four, I felt like had some good realism, and it had the right balance where it's like San Andreas. It's like, dude, your character would get skinny if you didn't waste time in the gym and shit like that. <laughs> like, like in GTA Five. I didn't really like the three character gameplay of it. Okay. I liked having the one character that I can invest in. So in GTA 4 where you're playing as the one guy and it's like you could go do these mini games and stuff like that with like take your girlfriend on dates and shit like that. Like that was cool to me and it had like that air of realism and but it wasn't like stupid stuff like oh shit if you don't put gas in your car you're gonna run out, <laughs> shit. Like, like where it's just like I'm, I'm just basically living a second real life. Like that's stupid, in my opinion. But I would say that my favorite was GTA Four. From if we're talking about the favorite GTA game, but from yeah. Rockstar, oh fuck. If this counts, I'm sorry. Bullying? That's Talk actually completely. No, no, no. Oh. I take everything I said back. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> If we're going off a of story mode, L.A. Noir. Wow, that okay. is such, Rockstar Games presents L.A. Noir. I completely fucking forgot. Um, I completely fucking forgot about this game, which goes to show you that it's not my favorite. But <laughs> it's so good, in my opinion. Like I really enjoy enjoyed the 1940s Los Angeles and all that good stuff. But yeah. Technically, Team Bondi or Bondi developed it, but oh it's a Rockstar game. Rockstar so, game. so yeah, I am sorry. Yes, Red Dead Redemption One's multiplayer still takes it, but as far as my favorite game from Rockstar, Eleanor. Nice, nice. Yeah, like that's I said, I like, never played that, but that's that's cool to see you like think about it and be like, oh, I got it right here. So. Guys, if you yeah. haven't played a little bit obviously it's on the PS4. Check it out. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah. It was on PS3. That's where I played it. And then I had to get it on PS4. Like, I personally... Oh, shit. My receipt's still in here. When did I buy this? I bought this on... Doesn't have the date on it. Oh, that's lame. Typically, don't receipts have dates? Yeah. Thanks for shopping it's at Best Buy to today. You, you're my Best Buy balance it, as of... December nineteenth, twenty seventeen. Yeah, I bought this game like five <laughs> years ago, or six years ago when it comes December. But yeah, La Noir, it's so good. Like, look at this image of. Uh... That is sick. Yeah, Cole Phelps. 
Cole Phelps. Badge two two four seven. Yeah, Cole Phelps. So yeah, yeah, just like um, Uncharted, the legacy thing is on the collection. They remastered it for the PS4, not the PS5. But Uncharted Four is remastered for the PS5. GTA is remastered for the PS5. Still waiting for that Red Dead Redemption Two to re- be remastered for the PS5. We're well, not necessarily remastered, but upgraded. So yeah, I'll I'll definitely play if they do that game and upgrade it for the PS5. I will definitely play Red Dead Redemption Two more. Um, LA Noir, I don't like I said I don't think they did that. They're not. But as far as G- GTA, uh, they got GTA Three, GTA Vice City, and GTA San Andreas. Those have been upgraded for the PS5. It's called the the definitive no the the trilogy, and it goes for like thirty bucks at Walmart or. I don't know how much on PS uh PS store, and they came out yeah. November 11, twenty twenty one. So if y'all want to play those games, yeah, they are there. <laughs> Perfect. So yeah, that wow, uh, that just let me know the moment of oh shit, wait a second, La Noire's <laughs> Rockstar lets me yeah. know that we could easily do a deep dive on Rockstar games. Um, yeah. And that would be sick because there's they got a lot of history and a lot to talk about. But like I said, Bully um, is an honorable mention that I never played, but I heard a lot of people love that. But like he said, it's like the realism of going to class and doing this and being a bully is crazy. Yeah, um, yeah, I get that. I get that. Um, so you so, can also buy that too on the uh, PS Store as well. Yeah. So that's a uh, Rockstar. That was yours. So I'm gonna go into. As far as a developer that I want to talk about, what's somebody that I want to talk about? Yeah, we did EA, Take Two slash Rockstar, and Naughty Dog. So yeah, apparently I can't type. My fucking <laughs> thing is fucked up. I can't type. You open the throw studios out there? <laughs> no, I know I know what I want to talk about, but it's okay. Let's talk about. Ubisoft. Okay. Yeah. When it comes to Ubisoft, they have way too many games to choose from. Ooh, when I looked at it, I didn't think so, but you probably got one, so. So Ubisoft has way too many games to pull from because they have, like, so many franchises that go way back, like Rainbow Six. They have uh, Assassin's Creed. They have Rayman. They have Prince of Persia. Splinter Cell. They have Ghost Recon. There's clearly some things that I'm saying that I can't remember right now. <laughs> like, there's clearly franchises that I can't remember. They have... Was it... Did they do Mirror's Edge? No, I don't think so. I thought that was EA. That was EA. <laughs> oh, yeah, that EA was Sports. EA. <laughs> well, not EA Sports. Okay. EA Games. Just stuff. A- yeah, Dead Space is still my number one, but shout out to Mirror's Edge and Mirror's Edge 2. I thought they were good. Or I liked I liked them for what they were. Yep, EA, there you go. By Dice, shout out to Dice, but EA published it. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. So if I am going with Ubisoft, right, hands down, my favorite franchise from them is Splinter Cell. Dominates the list, like... I have a really soft spot for Assassin's Creed 1 and Assassin's Creed 2. And if I was going to the Assassin's Creed franchise as a, like specifically, it would be Assassin's Creed 2 that destroys any other of the games. And then Assassin's Creed 1 is close second. Everything else falls way off. <laughs> and if I am talking about Rainbow Six, Rainbow Six Siege, very good. Big shout out to Rainbow Six Las Vegas. They came out like 2007 or something like that. Very good. But Splinter Cell kills, literally sneaks through the shadows with three <laughs> green lights and back, uh, like choke, rear naked chokes Altair and destroys yeah. Ezio Aditori da Firenze. No. Uh, Sam Fisher is one of the coolest fucking characters as far as like special ops force, a special ops character that you can name. And he's got like witty banter. He's funny. 
he's a badass, calm under pressure. Yeah. And oh, the overall stories and the gameplay is amazing, in my opinion. Like, just being able to, and I mentioned this a little bit on one of the shows last week or the week before, but yeah, just being week. able to, like, that had another level of realism that was very cool. Like, when I played Double Agent, which was the first game that I played on PS2, I was like, wow, this is, okay, so when you think about Infamous, and you know how like you can make the good choice or the bad choice. Yeah. This was the first game that I experienced choices with like that. The games that I was playing around the time were like the Jack and Dexter's Jack 2 where you're experiencing the story and it's kind of an open world game or GTA Vice City where you're doing crazy stuff and you get to choose what you want to do, yeah. but it's not impacting the story. Double Agent was the first game where Every time you did something, it had an effect on the gameplay. And I knew that from playing through the game one time versus playing through the game the second time. Because I, it was it, like very key moments. And I think it was like the first level or the, like the second level. You go to jail. And the reason you go to jail is so you can become friends with this, uh, I forgot what the name of the, enemy faction was but you become friends with a guy that works for the bad guy i forgot his name yeah. and at the very beginning lambert is your kind of go-to like he's the one who gives you missions from third echelon or third echelon he's like hey there's a guy in there we need to get information from him don't kill him <laughs> but then the other guy the bad guy is like kill him so you're like wrestling with him and you're holding him and you get to make the choice. Like, do I kill the guy or do I spare the guy? Yeah. And the first time I was like, man, I'm really trying to get in with this this guy. I mean, I can easily, if I infiltrate them, that's how I was thinking as like a fucking 10 year old. I was like, all right, <laughs> if I kill this guy, I'll be able to infiltrate the bad guys a little bit more easily and I'll be able to get the information that I'm looking for from them. So I kill the guy. Lambert's like, what the hell? What the hell, yeah. Sam? <laughs> but... The very next like sequence, we break out. I break out of my cell. I go over to the other guy's cell, break him out. We kill a guard, and he takes the gun. And he's like, Sam, take this gun. I want you to have it. Um, we're going to need it to get out of here. You take it. And I was like, all right, cool. So I go through the mission, have a gun. And when I played through it the second time, I got to the same thing. I was like, all right, so... I killed the guy last time. I'm going to save him this time. Yeah. So I spare his life. Very next sequence, I break out of my cell, go into his cell. He comes up, and we kill the guard again. He has the gun, and Sam goes, here, let me take that gun. Like, the dialogue's changed. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, dude, no way. The way you spared that guy's life, like, I, uh, I don't know if that would be a good idea. I'll hold on to it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit, now I got to play this whole level with no gun. Dang. Like, I got to, it made it harder, you know? And I'm yeah. like, I'm like, damn, okay, that was like, I really experienced, like, choice. Yeah. That was like the first time I experienced choice in video games where it really impacted the way I was playing the game and also the way the story unfolded. Because, like, you would get different cutscenes based off of different choices you'd make. Yeah. And me personally... Splinter Cell Double Agent was top tier. Even though I only played the PS2 version, where the PS3 yeah. version, I had found out years later, the PS3 version had um, other levels that the PS2 version didn't have. So yeah. I'm actually not even experienced the full game of Double Agent. But that was kind of a pivotal moment where I'm like, ooh, I do like choice in video games. And this it really made me f have agency over the character and over the story, and Splinter Cell Double Agent was, I feel, a great Splinter Cell game. Now, obviously, yeah. it's PS2, so it has some of those older controls, but Splinter Cell Conviction on Xbox 360, I played a little bit of, and I really thought I played the demo, thought that shit was dope as fuck. Yeah, and the Splinter Cell Blacklist came out on PS3 and that one is really good and they are making and doing that remake of Splinter Cell uh, Stealth Action Redefined 
which is the first one. Yeah. And I can't, I know it's still early, but I can't wait for that. I think that's going to be fucking sick with the updated controls, visuals, everything. But Blacklist is a close second just because of all the updates that they made for the PS3. But mm-hmm. Splinter Cell Double Agent. <laughs> Delicioso. Excellent fucking game from Ubisoft. Nice. I guess I never really fully played. I only played a demo or I rented it from Blockbuster back in the day. So that's cool <laughs> to hear you actually say that. It's, it's funny because Blockbuster, that, that's how you know how Dude. long it's been. <laughs> the game that I remember, not to cut you off, but the game I remember renting from Blockbuster over and over and over again was Glover on the Nintendo 64. <laughs> Glover? What the heck? I don't even remember what the heck it was. <laughs> Glover. Like, we'll talk about it. All right. Yeah, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> but go on with uh, your Ubisoft pick. My Ubisoft. What's crazy about Ubisoft, guys, a lot of the games, you will know, shout out to the people for reaching out to me on a particular game that I'm going to mention. But as far as Ubisoft, I wasn't a fan of really many of the games. Like Assassin's Creed never got into. Uh, Tom Clancy was probably kind of cool, but I never really owned them. Like I said, everything I played from Ubisoft was pretty much a demo or was rented. Yeah. Except for one game, so I'm gonna have to go with Riders Republic. <laughs> God damn, kinda like, that reason? I, yeah, I know, dude. But it's like the free roam, the the graphics. Um, it's just the the freeness, the the music. I they had a really good soundtrack. If you actually turn up the volume in those games, it was it was really good. Yeah, it's just the fact that you can pretty much experience of whatever you really want it. I feel like they could have did better in the game. I actually literally took the whole 30-minute survey or whatever it was when they actually sent it to my email. I told them what they could have did. Like the the customization, they could have been way better. I feel like the best stuff you had to buy. And I'm glad I got the product stuff for free pretty much. But other than that, they, they needed to work on that customization. That was the only thing that it lacked. They needed to do more free mode stuff. But out of everything, Riders Republic, BMX, uh Flighting with the air suit, the snowboarding, the skiing, all of that, uh, going through different scenery like the, what was it, grass, the mountains, the canyons, the snow. I really enjoyed it. And I appreciate y'all for um, buying the game because I think I brought it up and you was like, oh, shoot, this is nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I saw a TikTok where I was like, oh, shit, that looks cool as fuck. How's he switching sports? midair like he'll go off a jump on a bike and then switch to skis in midair and i was like oh that's a sick it was a short clip and then you mentioned descenders and riders republic and i was like oh that's the fucking video i saw it was (laughs) very cool and i was thinking about it the other day like when we went skiing and came back i was like damn i want to get on riders republic again i still got on the ps5 and i still have it as my uh um did you play the ps5 version or no? Uh, yeah, I did. I played it for like for forty five seconds, um, but I still have <laughs> it as my uh, nice. background on my computer. So I definitely, yeah, Riders Republic, excellent pick, excellent pick. Uh, so yeah, so that's pretty much me. I never been a huge fan, but the side of the Rayman, like I said, Rayman was cool. I like Rayman three D. A lot of people don't like that, but Rayman three D. I like Rayman 3D because it was – I like 3D more than the plat, like the side side thing. I don't like that. I didn't like Rayman, Legend, none of that. I don't, I don't like that. But as far as like open world 3D, you had to move around. It was cool. I like the corniness of it. Uh, but Rise of Republic, I like the realness and the freeness of it. Um, so, yeah, maybe whenever they make another one, I feel like it's probably going to be one of the best games if they ever do that. Oh, like uh, Riders Republic 2? Yes. And they implement everything people said in the survey, customized, like you can do whatever you want. That will freaking be awesome. I'm already seeing how good that game is going to be. Yeah. Um, as speaking of soundtracks in games, because you said it was a really good soundtrack, um, I wouldn't know. <laughs> because I would only, like every song that came on, I was like, what is this? What is this? So I just, sometimes I'll customize the soundtrack in a game where it only plays certain songs and skips over others. Yeah. In Riders Republic, I turned off all songs except Black and Yellow. 
So like the whole time I'm playing the game is black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. So when I think about that song, I think, or when I think about writers, I think about that song. And when I think, so hear that song, I think about writers. Same with Watch Dogs One. Yeah. Um, I turned off all the music except for Day and Night. <laughs> so like Day and Night, round, round, round. I toss a turn. I keep stressing my mind, mind. So it's like I would Flag. only listen to that song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what it sounded that good. I sounded that yeah. good. But um, I would do that in the in those two games. But yeah, 